antibiotics first came into use about 100 years ago. In 1910, the first antibiotic, salvarsin, was introduced as the first effective treatment for syphilis and African trypanosomiasis. Probably better known was the accidental discovery of penicillin in 1928 by Alexander Fleming. Fleming was a bit sloppy in his research, and after returning from holiday, noticed that a fungus, Penicillium notatum, had contaminated his culture plate of Staphylococcus bacteria that he had left open while gone. The fungus had created bacteria-free zones wherever it grew on the plate. Fleming isolated and grew the mold in pure culture and found that it was effective in preventing bacterial growth even at low concentrations. This started the golden age of natural product antibiotic discovery. Antibiotics have been one of the greatest medical breakthroughs, allowing many to be treated and saving many lives. However, what happens when the cycle shifts and antibiotic resistance becomes more prevalent? According to the CDC, more than 2.8 million antibiotic resistant infections occur in the US each year resulting in about 35,000 deaths. Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. In today's video, we are going to delve into the realm of antibiotic resistance. What is it? How does it happen? And what steps can we take to better prevent this? First, let's become familiar with antibiotics and how they work before we talk about what antibiotic resistance is. Antibiotics work by either inhibiting the growth or replication of a bacteria or killing it altogether. Some antibiotics are specific or highly specialized. This means that they are only effective against certain bacteria. These would be used when the doctor knows what type of bacteria they are dealing with. Other types of antibiotics are referred to as broad spectrum antibiotics. This means they are designed to attack a wide range of bacteria, including your own good natural bacteria. These would be used when the doctor is unsure of the type of bacteria that is causing the illness. No matter what type of antibiotic that is being used, they are not effective against viruses. What does it mean then to be antibiotic resistant? This means that the bacteria that is trying to be eliminated by the use of antibiotics is now resistant to it. It's important to understand that the body is not resisting the antibiotics, but the bacteria itself. Because this can affect anyone at any stage in life, it makes it one of the world's most urgent public health care problems. How does this happen? Bacteria have the ability to mutate. If the mutation allows the bacteria to become resistant to antibiotics, this is a very beneficial mutation for the bacteria and allows it to stay alive even if the proper antibiotic is used. Bacteria can grow very quickly, so if a bacterium gains antibiotic resistance, it can then pass it to future generations in a timely manner. Another thing bacteria can do is transfer genes. As long as the bacteria is near other bacteria, then the bacteria that has gained antibiotic resistance can transfer that gene to other bacteria. This is done through a process called horizontal gene transfer. These mutations can then be spread much faster as the bacteria can multiply fast and horizontal gene transfer can occur. What this means is that it becomes more and more difficult to treat these antibiotic-resistant microbes, leading to more and more deaths. In places like a hospital setting, these antibiotic-resistant bacteria can spread very quickly and are very hard to control. Let's take a look at how antibiotics kill um, antibiotic-sensitive bacteria, so bacteria that antibiotics would work on, versus how, what happens when antibiotics are given um, and the bacteria that it's trying to fight is an antibiotic-resistant bacteria. So here is a population of dividing bacteria, as would happen in your body in an infection, etc. And now we give antibiotics to um, 
the person. Okay, so imagine antibiotics are given and then the antibiotics work over the course of time. Eventually, all the bacteria die. However, now here's another population of bacteria. However, this population of bacteria has gained antibiotic resistance to the antibiotic that's being treated. So now in the same instance, antibiotic, that antibiotic is given to these bacteria, to, to the person who maybe has it, to kill off this bacteria, and now it doesn't work. So it continues to grow. So in these cases, then uh, the person has to be hospitalized, Many different um, antibiotics have to be used to try to fight off the bacteria. And sometimes it's not successful. As mentioned before, many deaths um, come about from this. And obviously this is very expensive. The person has to spend a long time in the hospital. So obviously this isn't something that we want, um, but why? Why is this increasing? Why do we keep seeing more and more of this? Why is antibiotic resistance increasing? Let's talk about some reasons that it is. Firstly, the overuse of antibiotics in recent years has really played a major role in increasing the prevalence of these antibiotic resistant bacteria. This is because even though antibiotics are only effective against certain bacteria, many people seem to think it also helps them get better from things like the common cold. This isn't true. Antibiotics are not effective against viruses. However, many people take them for viral infections. Doctors are also very quick to prescribe medicines such as antibiotics. Be aware of yourself and ask yourself if you truly do have a bacterial infection and if antibiotics are necessary for your sickness. Another reason is the more the bacteria are exposed to the antibiotics because it's being overprescribed and overused, then there's more of a selection pressure that is put on those bacteria. This is going to allow for that genetic mutation, allowing these bacteria to uh, gain antibiotic resistance and then also to spread that resistance. Another reason would be if you're on antibiotics, you need to complete the entire course of antibiotics that is prescribed by your doctor. Not completing the entire course can leave bacteria behind that can also gain antibiotic resistance. Um, then these mutations can be passed on to future generations of bacteria. So again, if you're on antibiotics, you want to make sure that you take all that antibi antibiotics, that you don't just stop them when you're feeling better, um, because uh, many people tend to stop them when they feel better and there could be some residual bacteria that is left in the body and this can also lead to antibiotic resistance. A fourth reason is that there is an increase in overuse of antibiotics in livestock and fish farming. And again, this overuse of antibiotics can lead to these um, antibiotic resistant bacteria. And then another reason is that the absence of new antibiotics being discovered. Uh, even though Fleming's discovery of penicillin opened up the golden age of natural antibiotic discovery, it actually peaked in the mid-1950s. Since then, there has been a gradual decline in antibiotic discovery and development. And so we're um, uh, fighting these bacteria with different antibiotics that we have that have been around for a while, and there's just not a whole bunch of new um, antibiotics being discovered. And so we need to be able to slow down these antibiotic resistant bacteria from taking over. So what are some things that you can do to help slow the spread of antibiotic resistance? One, use antibiotics only when they are prescribed by doctors and only when you have a bacterial infection, not for things like the common cold or any other viral infections. Remember, antibiotics are not effective against viruses. Two, if you are on antibiotics, complete the entire course of antibiotics prescribed by your doctor. Make sure that you don't leave um, any pills left. Take the entire course so that you don't leave those residual bacteria within the body. Three, never use or share leftover antibiotics. Do not self-medicate. Four, be sure to prepare healthy and clean food, 
a good um, immune system is a healthy immune system and that's fed by the things that you put into your body and exercise to keep your immune system healthy. And finally, observe proper hygiene. For example, you should wash your hands properly and often to keep bacteria levels low. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that it helped you to better understand antibiotic resistance. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Please remember that my channel is not to be used for medical advice. It is for scientific uh, information only. If you have any issues, any medical issues, please make sure that you do see your doctor. If you like my video and the content of my video, please make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos so that I can continue to keep this channel going. Thank you.